no one chooses to be fat. And I think it's so important to remember that if you're fat, you haven't chosen it. Like, I know you haven't chosen it because you've tried so hard to not be fat. Um, and no rational person would choose to be fat in a world that really makes it incredibly difficult. How did you make it to adulthood with this kind of mentality? Can we at least try to be a little bit, a little, just take a little bit responsibility for yourself and stop externalizing literally every single issue you have? Your, your reason why people didn't choose to be fat is because it's difficult to not be fat. I'll give you that most people don't realize they're fat until they're fat. Most people are gradually gaining weight over a period of time and not actually looking at the weight that's accumulating on their body because they're slowly but surely gaining five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds in a year and they're doing that consistently for multiple years or upwards of a decade. Sure, but... Does that mean that you didn't do anything about it? Were you just objectively supposed to be a fat person? Is this just your fate? Your 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 be all end all was just for you to be a fat guy? Nah, nah, that doesn't even make sense. Like, what am I coming out of the fucking womb like a giant slug, like Job of the Hutt or something like that? Obviously not. You're not born fat, and you're not like supposed to be 400 pounds. And if you're gonna sit here and take away all the accountability from somebody by telling them you didn't choose to be fat, all you're doing is just reinforcing their bad behaviors and reconfirming their already bad beliefs, which is that fat is being, being fat is okay when we all know it's not okay to be fat. Like, how, do, how did you even get to that baseline, dude? Where is your logic in this shit? How did you get there? Is it difficult to not be fat? If you're already fat, sure, it's gonna be difficult, but all it takes is a little bit, hear me out, all it takes is a little bit of you putting in the work to in the consistency to have a calorie deficit. It's not about going to the gym. It's not about lifting weights. It's about the it's about the diet. It's about understanding that you are eating too many calories, and because you're eating too many calories, you're gonna gain weight. Calories in, calories out. Now I'm not telling you to eat drastically less calories than what you're eating. If you're eating 3,000, don't go down to 1,000, obviously. But you should have an understanding that eating 200, 300 less calories will 100% make you lose weight. So I and you do that consistently as well. Like I'm not saying do 2,800 calories for like two days and then go for that to like 5,000 calories. No, that's obviously gonna make you gain weight. You need to be at a net value of lower than what you are at all the time. So no, and you know what, dude? This woman, dude, is actually, I think, suffering from some type of like mental derangedness or something like that because I don't know how she made it this far in her life with this man. I don't know if she's grifting. I hope that she's grifting because the way that she thinks about stuff actually is retarded. None of this makes any sense at all. But I'm going to let her speak because the more she speaks, the more uh, the more hilarious it gets. So let's let's hear the rest of what she says. By the way, she's getting married in the, I don't know when, sometime soon. She's a bride. And I think her entire career is defined by being a plus-size bride, which is really weird because I think this is her first time ever being married. And you would think like, oh, wow, a person that specializes in being a plus-size bride has only been a plus-size bride one time. I don't know, dude, or has only, like, they're not even a bride yet, like, they haven't even had their wedding yet, which is really weird, like, they're newly engaged, like, she's a fiancé as of, like, a month ago or something like that, so I don't even know, like, her career is literally, though, like, creating weddings for plus-size people, which I don't even know what, what even is a plus-size wedding, like, what, like, I'm showing up and there's, like, BK on the, like, the BK and McDonald's are, like, the servers and shit like that, like, what do you, what is plus-size, like, everything has to be, like, lazy boy furniture, for when you sit down like what is oh yeah when you guys stand up to take your vows you actually don't stand up you sit down you sit down and do your vows or some shit like that and like the entire the whole entire thing you know when the dad walks the woman down the aisle that doesn't happen okay like like you you get pushed down the aisle in like a wheelchair or something while holding your dad's hand because you're plus size you can't walk for yourself or some shit i don't know i have no idea what plus size marriages even are like i, I, I so what is that shit anyway rational person would choose to be fat in a world that really makes it incredibly difficult that is true the world does make it very difficult and i think we have to really emphasize the fact that it's the world it's not society if you were not in society which by every metric being in a society is going to make your life easily easier but especially if you're fat 100 percent um but if you were in nature you're done i mean there's no doubt about it now don't get me wrong a lot of people in general in a society that have been conditioned to live in a society are going to be perpetually just completely booty blasted if they ever went out into uh, the nature you know what i'm talking about there's like mountain lions there's geckos there's you know aardvarks and shit like that and you're gonna wake up and your legs are gonna be gone because the mountain lion were they were munching on you and shit like that so obviously most people are gonna suck dick 
if they're out in public uh, or out in nature, 100%. But being fat, you're at a major disadvantage, even in society. So can you imagine what it'd be like if you were out in nature? Obviously, I don't want any of these people to be out in nature. It's kind of weird that these people do want to do the weird stuff like nature walks and stuff like that when you guys literally can't even walk upstairs. Can we please like have some priorities? Can we have like a course of action like a A, B, C, D instead of just going right to D and you guys literally can't even start at A? But anyway, the world is not really built for fat people, but it's not because you guys are fat. It's because you guys make yourselves so incredibly unacceptable for almost every situation that we have built in our society. And then for some reason, you blame it on us. What did we do? This shit was here before you guys were even born and you guys are complaining about it. Can you like make yourself more adept for society instead of asking society to make society more adept for you? Who are you? Where is this entitlement coming from? And why are you guys so incredibly never trying to take accountability for yourselves? Anyway. To be fat. So I think that so much of the unhappiness that we experience as fat people is because every time we come up against an issue, like a place where we don't feel welcome as fat people, where we- Yeah, like any store that doesn't have elevator access or like any time that you wanna walk on the beach, cause walking on sand kind of sucks a lot of dick. I don't know if any of it, I don't know if you guys have ever walked on sand. It's not the best. It actually feels really uncomfortable, especially on the feet. I don't know why so many people like to like put their foot in sand and like move it around and stuff like that. It's actually gross, okay? But anyway, um, I don't like that personally. But literally anytime you have to move your body in a, I wouldn't even say extreme way, but like an adept way, that's going to be very hard for these people. So anyway, we're not catered for like this. What do you mean you're not catered for? Why would you expect to be catered for? It's already an anomaly that we have like buildings made for human beings. You do want like, I feel like these people just don't understand this, right? Okay. Like we are living in a time frame that is very unique compared to all of the time frames of human history. Okay. You have, you can literally go into convenience stores and stores in general and buy groceries. You do realize that like up until a hundred years ago, that was never a thing, right? You do understand you had to go outside and like, throw spears at like aardvarks or elephants or something and like suck on the meat for 14 months and try to like preserve it as long as possible to feed your family or like suck on a horseshoe or something like that or sell your child for a horseshoe i don't know but like we live in a very very great time and for some reason these people all look at that and they go yeah, no, like, even though things are, like, really good, and don't get me wrong, they are really good, I'm never going to look at them as good, because I am not being catered to. I am literally, like, I walk down the street, and there are places I have to walk. Can you believe that? Walking. Who would have, oh, like, you know what? I don't think your quarrel is with society. I don't think your quarrel is with humanity. I think your quarrel is with God. I think you need to, like, I don't know, dude, write a manifesto on how shit God is because he had to make you with legs and he had to make the world for human beings. Like, I honestly don't think that you want to be a human being. I just think that you probably just want to be hooked up into like a metaverse or something like that where you could just like live your life and never have to move your body in any significant way. Like even the idea of like twitching would be probably too extreme for you. Like, what do you exactly want? And how do we achieve that? Like, what do we do? For you, honestly speaking, I mean, obviously, there's nothing you can do, right? There's nothing you can do to make yourself better and more capable for society. But it's all about what we can do. So please, enlighten us. What can we do to help you, please? Let's just use clothes as an example where we can't get clothes that fit us. I can't get, bro, it's, you know what, these people, go off, queen, go off, queen. Um, and we feel like... We aren't allowed to be in that space. We're not allowed to have the same experience as other people. I think there's a difference between not feeling like you're allowed in those spaces and then not being allowed in those spaces, okay? Like, if you're in an environment that requires a lot, like, for instance, would you feel like you're, anybody can be a part of a marathon, right? Anybody. You can just sign up and be a part of the marathon. Now, granted, some people may feel like they're not supposed to be there. Like, guys without legs. Like, if you don't have legs, running a marathon is going to be pretty hard okay in the same way that you being an overweight person that has little to no cardiovascular health is going to feel the same way obviously to, obviously to a lesser degree because you have legs but you're really not using them at all um can we bring back using legs by the way like i get it sitting down is like hashtag meta nowadays like driving cars and stuff like that but can we bring back using legs i feel like we're not utilizing them to the extent that i feel like we should but anyway you have legs but even going through a marathon is going to be extremely taxing for somebody like you so is this like a scenario that we're talking about that when it comes to oh i feel like i'm not welcomed 
Is it really like a store you walk in and you just don't have plus size clothing and you feel like you're not welcome there? Like, I guess to a very basic degree, you're not welcome there because like what clothes are there for you? But nobody is prohibiting you from walking into the store. Nobody's prohibiting you from looking through the selection, right? Right? Like what, what do you want us to do exactly? You are so far out of the normality of society and then you're complaining that society isn't catering to you. Where is the entitlement coming from, dude? I swear these people have gotten literally everything in their fucking life. And then they put themselves in scenarios that are so far out of the realm of possibilities. Like becoming so fat that you can no longer fit in like literally anything. And then being mad that you can't fit in that stuff. And instead of taking accountability, you then blame it on society. Why is it that easy for you? Why can't you just take some accountability? Like look in the mirror for like literally 20 seconds. People because we're fat. When we then think, well, that's our fault because we don't have the willpower or we're too lazy um, to lose weight, we turn the failing of the world. It's just too easy for these people to externalize all their problems. And you have to be very careful when you're thinking about shit like this because oftentimes it can really just be put upon you again. And these people will be there and they'll say, it's, it's such a hard realization. It's such a hard realization to determine that it's not me. It's the world. Like, I'm just being oppressed systemically. And in general, like, the world is oppressing me. And they'll say that that's hard. No, that's not hard. That's easy. That's really easy to sit there and take away all your accountability and put it on something that literally you can't even charge. You literally can't even do anything about that. Like as soon as you go, it's their fault and it's society. What is society even going to do? It's not even a real thing. That's literally just an idea. So you're taking all of your shit and putting it on nothing basically. And you're saying that that's hard. No, what's hard is to look in the mirror and say, I can't walk upstairs anymore. I have a hard time. I have, I, I literally have a hard time walking upstairs and when I get to the top, I'm out of breath or I physically have to make breaks in the middle of that. Or uh, I am literally fucked if there are no elevator accesses. Now it's one thing if you're like 85 years old and you literally have gone through your entire life and you have like arthritis and like cerebral palsy and shit like that. Like granted, sure, that's fine. But if you're like literally 32 and you're upset that there are stairs, you are the one ultimately that needs to make these life decisions. Like, I understand it's very easy. It is easy to take away your accountability and put it on something else. But you need to look in the mirror ultimately and make your own decisions. It is a much more difficult decision to, to, to look at yourself and go, what can I do? How do I change my situation? And that's the main problem with these individuals. Like, they have so quick. They're so quick. And they think it's strong, but it's not strong. You're weak as shit. You are a weak person if you're sitting there and you're putting all your problems on society. Take some accountability for yourself. Of society, of culture, of other people, of other entities, into our failing. We have spent our whole lives walking around and experiencing these little, like, indignities or inconveniences. The, the problem, like... Is again, if you're sitting here and you're blaming all your problems on society, you do realize like there's nothing that can happen, right? Because like, what are you going to do? Like, you're not actually doing anything either to make it better for your people, which are just literally fat people, which are not even really like a different organization of people. You're just a person that's supposed to be thin, that's fat, and you're carrying around extra weight for literally no other reason than to just carry around weight. And you're complaining that you can't do certain things because your body is inadequate for literally almost every situation. There is not going to be a... Like, I want to stress this really, really quickly. Like all the shit that they're saying right now, there is not a single thing that they're not going to struggle with. Make no mistake about it. Dude. The, the fact that they're having all this extra weight on their body, no matter what they do, they are going to be prohibited by it. So even if we do seed ground, even if we do give them what they want, it's a never ending thing. They're, will you give an inch? They'll take a mile, kind of like how their gut was formed. And they'll never stop complaining because these individuals, these people they'll never be satisfied. Kind of like the same way that they're never satisfied about the meals that they eat, right? They're consistently always eating and becoming bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you complain about this shit, dude, I want you to like, man, I would love to have a conversation with this individual. And you know what? By, I believe I did hit up this individual on Instagram, but let me be honest here for a second. She's never going to reply. Never going to happen. And it's really tough. It's really, really tough because this individual is actually retarded. And I would love to have a conversation with this individual that's mentally challenged. I mean, I obviously she's not mentally dis i hope she's not she's not mentally disabled but 
um the point i'm making is like the way that she thinks about this shit dude it would be an amazing conversation to see how the fuck she got to this thought pattern and why she's refusing to take accountability and also blaming it on something that literally doesn't exist you might as well at this point say like oh the reason why i i am incompatible with society is because star wars or you could just say other things narnia harry potter because that's basically the same thing what do you want us to do lady why can't you fix your own problems it's all huge you know humiliations or whatever because we're fat taking all that on board as though it's our own fault it is your fault there's no other way to say it than that and if you refuse to take accountability for yourself that's fine but your life is going to suck a lot of dick because you are literally like you're literally complaining about shit that you can change and you're never going to change it so you're just going to consistently be worse you're going to live a consistently progressively ass life because as you know as you get older it becomes harder and harder to lose that weight so the younger you are the easier it is to lose weight and you're literally just like going i'm not gonna lose weight because there's no reason to i'm literally just fat because i'm fat which is like literally impossible by the way you can't can't just be fat because you're fat there has to be something extreme involved in order to become fat like how many calories are you eating in a day are you telling me that you're not eating an enlargement of calories in a day and that doesn't like that's not increasing your gut size really i would love to see what your diet looks like you know taking it on board and being like yes that's our fault we deserve to be punished it's not about being deserved to be punished you're looking at the you're you're looking at you're looking at the cause and effect of becoming fat as a punishment when that's fucking stupid you can't look at gain, gaining a lot of weight and no longer being able to walk upstairs as a punishment you should be looking at it as this is what happens as a consequence of doing something else you understand that's like somebody going i put my hand inside of an industrial press and then my hand got squished like into tiny fucking pieces and now i no longer have a hand that's my punishment it's not a punishment you put your hands inside of a fucking with a, a, a hydraulic a press and you knew what it was going to do I'm sorry that you can no longer do certain things, but I'm more sorry at your mental capacity, dude. Like, cause that's, that's in crazy. I, I, I can't believe that you're literally blaming all your problems on everybody else here. Because we haven't lost weight. And of course the world is punishing us because it's teaching us that we have to lose weight. There is never going to be a space for us as we are. And so, you know, we walk through the world collecting. I wouldn't say walk, but sure. I mean, more like wobble. All these like things that tell us that we need to change yes you know they just reinforce this idea yes. that like we need to fix ourselves and which is the correct course of action because if you sit there and you say we need to fix ourselves as opposed to they need to fix us or they need to fix the world it's kind of like listen when somebody is having financial issues and they have no money literally no money and they come to you and they say listen uh i have Listen, man, I have literally no money in the bank account. I'm perpetually in debt, literally $50,000 in debt. I have a kid on the way. My wife is like pregnant, you know, she's got a kid on the way. My mortgage is due in literally a month. Like I need to make money today. I need to literally get out of this financial destitute today. And you tell that person, okay, I got you. This is what we do. We go to Congress and we tell them that we need a overall, like we need to give everybody money, right? There needs to be an incentive for all, for the government to just give out money freely and do that. Then we need to advocate that. We need to stand outside of the government office and we need to advocate for a universal income for all people. That person's going to look at you and go, oh, well, okay, man, thanks, bro. And then go up to his basement with a gun because... What the fuck did you just tell that guy? There's nothing he can do now. He's got no advice. That information might as well be fucking useless to him because he has issues today. He has issues tomorrow. He has issues next week. He has issues next year. So you tell somebody, hey, dude, so you're having all these problems with your obesity. You're having all these issues where you're literally out of breath consistently. You can't find any clothes. You can't do any of this stuff. You're, all, you're facing all these problems. And they go, what can I do to improve these situations? And you go, nothing because guess what it's not your fault it's society well they're just gonna look at you and go oh okay then i guess i'm just fucked i guess it's just over for me i guess like i can't do anything all you're doing is just reinforcing the bad behavior when in reality there is something you can do it's called lose some fucking weight it's called take some accountability for yourself it's called looking into the nutritional advantages that you have which is like the internet you can literally find out how many calories or something how many calories you need how many calories you should be eating how many calories are not good for you and then just go based off that live a healthier lifestyle and it's all determined based off of you and guess what that's actually amazing because you can do it it's not like you can't do it and i get it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard obviously moving your body when you have never done that before and taking some accountability when you've never done that before it's gonna be difficult but I have faith in you as an adult. I mean, hopefully. I mean, this woman could literally just be a lost cause, to be honest. I mean, the way that she thinks right now, oftentimes I think this person is is done for. It's done for, dude. The fact that you made it to like 34 years of your life thinking like this, 
it's over. It's over for you. <laughs> I don't even know if there's any hope for you anymore. We need to change, you know? They just reinforce this idea that like, we need to fix ourselves and there's something so inherently wrong with us. Not just like what our bodies look like, but who we are as people that yes. we can't change that. You can change a lot of shit about yourself and including the way that you think about this. But when people say there's nothing you can do to change, uh, we're, we're, like what? What exactly, who is saying that to you? Who, who? And when I said like, there's nothing you can do to change, I hope there is, but the way that you got to 30 something years of your life and somehow you still thought like this, I think there's no hope for you. I genuinely think it's over. I think that you have caught yourself and some, make no mistake about it. Because this person has an entire business based on plus size industry, right? There is no incentive for them to believe anything else. They have literally boxed themselves in to such a degree, foundations, foundation, foundations, giant, giant fucking walls. I don't think, I don't think it's, ever possible for this person to ever get out of it this person has literally been in this industry for uh upwards of a few years at this point so they have no reason to ever remove themselves from it and they will literally die on the hill of obesity physically and morally and mentally because if they don't and somehow somebody debunks them uh they lose their entire career they lose their entire everything because their lifestyle the way they operate their business it it literally binges on the fact that they believe that being plus size is not something you could change so uh it's uh, that's why i say it's almost impossible there's, i don't think I, I physically don't i i genuinely think there's nothing you could say to this person that would ever convince them even if you give them fact you give them logic you give them statistic you give them evidence nothing nothing would ever change them because they're caught in their ways and they have no incentive they have no certifications to ever believe anything otherwise because they have careers and other things based off that and so if we don't choose to be fat which you do choose to be fat this is like literally the biggest problem here if you genuinely believe that you didn't choose to be fat which is uh, fucking retarded how the fuck did you not choose to be fucking fat how does that make sense thermodynamics exist we are literally denying a fundamental rule of our reality if we view fat as like i'm not saying this is like the medical truth but i'm saying let's just view like being fat as like a chronic illness if you were born into a body that had a chronic illness but you weren't okay all right it's already bad because you weren't born into a body that was naturally fat that, okay so let's take that away but you know what fine whatever it doesn't make sense already but fine and as you grew up people kept telling you that there's no space for you in the world um, as you are, you need to somehow miraculously cure your chronic illness in order to be welcome in the world. Dude, first of all, if you were born with a chronic illness, we as a society are definitely becoming better and better in terms of equalizing everybody, but some people are going to fall behind, dude. It is what it is. Some people have niche conditions where they're not going to be able to be accurately antiquated within society, and that sucks. But then again, these are very niche scenarios where somebody has a particular condition where they can't do things in certain places, and society is to blame for that. Like, for instance, for a long time, people that were blind were just fucked, like, for a long time. If you were blind, you were fucked, or you died at, like, 12 or something like that, or younger or something like that. But it's becoming better and better. We're, we're becoming better. Uh, e we're trying to equalize the playing field for those people to make it life easier for them. Same thing with people that have no legs, wheelchairs exist, maybe bionic legs, things are becoming better and better and better. But if you have like a very, very niche scenario or condition that's going to be outside the realm of those other conditions, yes, it's going to be difficult for those people to navigate society. And I know it sucks to say, but it is what it is. What do you want me to fucking do, dude? Like, what, what, what am I supposed to fucking do? If somebody has like mental, if somebody has like 1% brain capacity and they physically can't walk or do anything like that, I get it. It sucks that they can't operate in society, but what am I supposed to do about that? I can't do shit about that, dude. It's something that fucking happens. All right, dude. But you know, the funny thing is, None of this even matters because you are not in that position. You are actually in the complete opposite position. You were born in a capable body, but you chose to make it uncapable and you can actually choose to make it capable again, but you refuse to do that. And this entire scenario that you've laid out in front of us, this, 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 uh, this evidence, this, this hypothetical that you have right now makes no sense in correlation to what the actual case of it is. I don't even know why you're even bringing this up. It has absolutely no merit in reality they cure your chronic illness in order to be welcome in the world. Uh, that would seem incredibly unfair and unjust. And I think people would have something to say about that. And we would be like, no, this is the world's fault, not ours. So if being fat isn't a choice, and I think that we can view it this way and that's 
what I find really useful to kind of unpick this, like... You, you find it useful because it's easier to accept the fact that there's nothing you can do about your own problem. And it's very, very easy to put it upon everybody else. But go off. Real please. horrible, like, self-punishment that we do. I like to think, like, I was born into a body. And I'm just going to use myself as an example. But I was born into a body that has... P I have PCOS and insulin resistance. So I was born into a body that is more inclined to gain weight. I was also born into a family with a really, really awful dad. <laughs> and pe our family used food to kind of numb that pain. So I was kind of born into a situation where I had an unhealthy relationship with food before I could even decide. Like I observed an unhealthy relationship with food. So are we working under the belief that being fat is just a character trait and there's nothing you can do about it? Or is this a coping mechanism and because you eat a lot of food, therefore you gain weight, but it's a character trait because... So, I just want to know, like, are you eat are you born as a fat person or are the byproducts of your birth, the things that, like, make you the person that you are, a consequence of why you're fat, if that makes any sense? Like, I mean, I can kind of agree with that. I mean, but I wouldn't necessarily say that that's just definitively who you are because of all those things that have happened to you. I think that there are ways to rise above that stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm definitely going to be that person that fully admits that some people are better off or definitely in worse positions on things that they have absolutely no control over at all, like where you're born, your parents' structure, the country of origin, whether or not you have family members in your house that are going to instill great values into you and stuff like that. Like, sure, 100%, I'm going to agree with you. Like, if you grow up in a fucked, fucked up household, it's going to be harder for you to transcend that particular type of genre compared to somebody that grew up in a stable household in a, you know, nice neighborhood and things such and so forth. So, I mean, I agree with you, but I the way you framed it at the very beginning, which was like, Oh yeah, being fat is just what it is. Like you're just fat. But if you're saying that you're you're just fat because things that have happened to me led to this particular point and this is just the way I am, I'm more inclined to agree with you. I'm still not inclined to agree with you in the sense of like there's nothing you could do about it. There is 100% a lot of things you could do about it. I get you a PCOS and insulin resistance. That sucks. But that doesn't take away from the fact that you do have accountability and you do have the ability of fully autonomy, by the way, to do something about your own self and make your life better. Like I you know, it's like somebody going I was born in a really fucked up household. We had no money. We were consistently poor. And because of that, I'm poor. And there's nothing I could do about that. Nah, there you can you can most definitely make money. You can most definitely, you know, transcend that stuff. It's gonna be harder, 100 percent It's gonna be difficult and things such as so forth compared to somebody that was born in like a middle class household or somebody that was born in like a higher class household. Sure, it's gonna be more difficult, but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't do it. That just means that you're in a, a worse off position. So I mean, sure, I guess, like, yes, if you're born in a really fucked up family household fucked up family household and you have little to no opportunities and you're using food as a coping mechanism and then also you have people that don't really care about you that are just going to let you keep continuing with that bad behavior obviously it sucks um but the way you were saying it before was like not this way dude so i mean we're going to keep listening to see where she's going with that but that is not what she was saying at the beginning i was also born into a low income family which meant that we were eating lower quality, like more processed food because it I was too, you know, I grew up in the projects, literally like public housing, 100%. And I was eating hot dogs and beans, dude. I was eating bologna. I was eating like packs of bread and shit like that. So yeah, that's true that when you grow up in like these low income areas and you know what, being in a low income area is very subjective depending on who you're talking about. Like for me, low income would be growing up in the projects, you know, having little access to food and things and so forth. But if you're talking about somebody in like Indonesia who literally has like no food, like no food around them and they grow up in like a hut or something like that, obviously their low income is going to be very, very different compared to my low income. My low income is like fucking leagues in a way better than theirs, but it's all within uh, context, right? It's all within the context. Here in America, that would be considered low income in my situation. I know it was literally government assistance and shit like that. So I, I totally understand what you're saying. Like, yes, it's going to be harder for you to uh, crawl your way out of a, a, a destitute pit such as that. And that's why I always say like when, whenever people say like, oh, yeah, um, pull yourself up by your bootstraps like you can do it. Things are like, you know, th these these things are nice. They're e they're easily they're very easily said. But within the context of the situation, it's very difficult to tell somebody that they have to pull themselves out of the boots bootstraps and go and get a job or go and go go get a career and go to school and do all this stuff when this person is literally living in like the hood 
and they have no job opportunities. The school they're going to consistently is always vandalized, and there's like only bad people there. The teachers don't even want to be there, um, and the only opportunities they have are the, what everybody else has, which is like selling drugs or living a life of crime, and that's fucking tough. And it takes a lot from a person to get out of that. I think it's very quick to judge a person that goes, well, you made the wrong decisions. They did make the wrong decisions, but you're not looking at it from the same the same way that they're looking at it. They didn't have a lot of options. And now, sure, you can consider that to be like a, they do have a lot of options from being in America, I agree, but it's, it's a very fucked up stance to be in, right, dude? That's like somebody going like, oh yeah, you were born in like the rice paddy fields of like Vietnam, and uh, you're telling that person, go to Harvard, dude. Go get a fucking job at Harvard, dude. Go work at Harvard and become like a college professor and things like that. And that guy goes, what the hell are you talking about, boy? I have to work on the rice field with my friends. You know, like that guy has no opportunities, dude. He, he was just born in the wrong place at the wrong time. Even if he was incredibly smart, he has no way to exercise those talents because he just doesn't have the opportunities. And that sucks. That really sucks, dude. It was cheaper, right? We already know that there are so many like biological, like medical, socioeconomic reasons that people are fat. And if we think of all these things as like, maybe they're things that you were born with, maybe they're things that you pick up along the way, you know, maybe you were born with another illness and that illness requires medication that makes you gain weight. Maybe you experienced something and as a result, your mental health suffered and, you know, food became something that you use to cope. Um, and even if you don't have any of these things and you just like eating, like, whatever but you know when i think of it as like a chronic illness and then i imagine the treatment that i have from the world as <laughs> as like framed as if the world is kind of discriminating against me because i have a chronic illness then suddenly it doesn't feel like my fault it yeah but that's an issue though is like there are systemic things in place that would be prohibiting you because you are fat from accessing or having opportunities to do particular types of things but the majority of the reasons why you're suffering from that stuff is because you yourself have made yourself that way and there is very very like little things that society can do in order to lift you out of your destitute of being fat you know and it's a very bad comparison to look at somebody that's for instance very poor or somebody that has little to no opportunities because of the neighborhood they're they're, they were born in things like that compared to you, a grown woman, an adult who has a career and a, a giant career at that specializing in this, you know, particular thing, which is like wedding dresses or wedding ceremonies and things like that. You're in a different, you're in a different d field, dude. Like you are completely different compared to like the kid that's like, I don't know, nine years old and has no opportunities and things such as so forth. Like it's, it's very different. So, I mean, I understand, I do, I really do understand what you're saying. It's just not the same, dude. And then also you're taking away a lot of the stuff that you could be doing for yourself and you're just saying like, I can't do it. You can do it. And a lot of the stuff that you would be doing would be menial. It would be like general things, passive things that you could do in order to make your situation better. But you've convinced yourself that there's nothing you can do about it. It feels like the world's problem, you know? Like really helps to just be like, I didn't choose this. It helps is such a cope. Are you admitting that you're literally coping right now? Are you admitting that this is like a like just to make you feel better just to make it see, like so you could sleep at night I, I i know that maybe that's not exactly what she's saying but that's what i'm getting from this woman is that she's basically admitting that i know that this is wrong and i know it doesn't make sense but it makes me feel better so i'm just gonna believe it anyway so much of the pain around being fat is this sense that i chose this by being lazy by not yeah because most of that is true so i guess you're just like forgiving it so that way you don't have to deal with the consequences of your own actions and it uh, helps you sleep at night i guess being good enough at dieting by eating too much like whatever there's this real sense of like incredible personal responsibility for weight that we don't have around other things um around other things that people suffer with like right? what um, and it's what I think justifies. Like I, I I wish these people would give some examples when they when they talk about this stuff because uh, if you're just gonna say like we just we justify weight in a different way we we it, we justify weight differently than we justify other things. Can you list some of those things so we can understand where you're going with this? Like so you can under so I can understand where you are because like if you just say that that's a very general way of saying like we look at things differently compared to other things. I get it. Like, yes, we do. But then again, like, yes, things are different. Like a boat is significantly different compared to a human being. You do understand that. Like, I, I get that. I need an example. Like culture 
uh, discriminating against us, you know, making fat jokes. Apparently fat jokes are still okay. They are okay. I don't know what the fuck you're talking. Racial jokes are okay, dude. Like, what do you, like, what is the problem here, dude? I, I, maybe I'm just, like, from a different era or whatever, dude. But um, even where we are right now as a society, it's, like, completely fine to make racial jokes depending on who you're around. I mean, like, we the whole comedic people that literally make jokes about... Uh, black people, Asian people, white people, even think jokes on men and women and things such and so forth. Like, what do you want exactly? You do realize that those are going to be held up to way higher of a scrutiny compared to fat jokes. Fat jokes are bottom of the barrel. So I don't know what your point is here. So like, we just shouldn't be making fun of fat people or making jokes about fat people. That doesn't seem feasible. You know, not allowing like space for us in like public spaces you like what public spaces are you talking about like where are you going where you don't have spaces like what are you talking about like okay look first of all public spaces is a very specific term you you can't just be talking about like i don't know dude parks sidewalks government offices i know that she's probably talking about like clinics i'm guessing or she's talking about like salons or movie theaters or retail shops like maybe she's talking about that when she means Publix like I said I need some examples you know not like giving us chairs that we're not gonna break like that's it's just it's such a cr I'm sorry dude I'm trying to like critically analyze this shit but you can't just come out of nowhere and be like oh yeah make sure that you supply chairs that we're not gonna break my god dude where are you going where you're breaking chairs bro like what you going to like the fucking dmv and you sit down one of those like row chairs and you just like crack off a piece of the fucking seat because your thighs are so big like how many times does this happen to you i always wonder this right how are you as an overweight individual breaking chairs consistently and somehow you do nothing about it? At some point you have to realize it can't be the chair. It has to be you, right? How do you go literally the extent of your life and somehow you don't take accountability for the breaking of chairs? Everything else is kind of like understandable because you have to cope and you have to understand that like, oh, none of this is my fault. So you can actually sleep at night so you can like live your life, I guess. But breaking chairs is insane, dude. Where are you going, bro? And you said this in public too, meaning like there were other people around seeing you break chairs if it's just like such a normity that you're like laughing about it at this point like oh yeah i broke chairs <laughs> what the fuck how many chairs have you broken dude jeez us in like public spaces you know not like giving us chairs that we're not gonna break like you know putting us on plane seats and then when we don't fit being like that person needs to buy two seats because they're ruining it for everyone you know not selling as by the way none of those things were public places uh I, I, can, I understand that like there might be some subsidies going to the airline industry but that doesn't necessarily make them public i mean but then again like i'm, I'm gonna be very liberal in the way that she's using the word public because i know what she means but just for the record that's not what public is so whatever she means clothes that fit us like that's how the world can justify it because they view it as our personal failing like okay so first of all if we were to do those things, you do realize that if we were to make things bigger, if we were to make things more efficient, more efficiently built, double reinforced chairs, make it so that the chairs are bigger, make it so that you guys can fit into these particular places, make clothes that are plus size, do all that stuff that you guys want, then what? what is the what is what do you what do you think is going to happen after that? Like do you not think that the prices of those th those things are going to go up? Do you not think that there's going to be a higher cost of to those items or maybe that's going to negatively affect other areas of our life. There's always a give and take, you know, always a compromise with things such and so forth. So when you say we need bigger plane seats or we need more clothes or we need chairs to be double or quadruple enforced because we consistently break these things. When we make chairs those sizes, OK, these big, ginormous, bulky chairs you do know that somebody has to make those, right? You know that some company has to make those. And then also, depending on what you're talking about, some of these chairs that are already there might have cost money, probably cost money to already put there to begin with. So that means that we have to take the chairs that are already there that were functional and working, not for you, but the majority of people, and take those away and put in new chairs that would be comfortable for you when I know in general, most fat people don't even go outside. And the same thing could be said for plus size clothing. I hear all the time, oh no, Plus size clothing doesn't fit me and there's never any in stores and things such and so forth. Most of the time, if you're plus sized, okay, if you're like a few extra pounds over, if you're like a hundred extra pounds over, it's probably not that big of a deal. But if you're like in the twos or three hundreds over and you're worried about clothes, you got other things to worry about. And then also you're not shopping. You're literally in a different era, okay? You're like 
in a, a place where most of the stuff is not going to be built for you in general. You did it to yourself, so you deserve to be punished. We're not going to make- She keeps going on about punishment. Nobody's saying it's punishment. It's just obviously things are going to occur when you do anything in life, cause and effect. So if you're sitting here and you're telling me that you gained weight and you're upset that you, the, 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 the realization of after you gained that weight was that there are going to be not so good benefits that you guys didn't know that there was going to be, even though everybody tells you that there's going to be problems with it. I'm sorry, but that's just what it is. I'm not even sorry about that, dude. You're, you literally did it yourself. Make any space for you. And as soon as you stop buying into that, as soon as you stop believing that you did this to yourself and so you deserve to be punished. As these people are just living in delusion. Like they're literally self-admitting delusion. They're literally saying, even though all of this stuff is true, even though I can acknowledge that I chose to, I mean, she literally said that, right? Like she was using food as a coping mechanism and she was eating it because she was feeling depressed or whatever else she felt, right? She was poor and things such and so forth. But oftentimes, like it's awesome. It's awesome that you can acknowledge that you had these issues and that you, you, you can go back and you can see that in hindsight you were having these problems. Once you turn like 34, 35, and then you, you, if you can articulate this stuff and you still come to the conclusion that none of it's your fault, and you can't do anything about it? Like, what do you, how the fuck, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, well, how the fuck did that happen, dude? It's insane to me that people can literally, like, people get a lot of value in telling you exactly what their problems are, but then they do nothing about it. It's like people get, like, a high. Like, they, they, they become, like, a, a transcended being because they can exactly tell you what their issues are. But for some reason, nothing ever gets done with these problems, dude. And it's actually even worse here because at least somebody tells you, like, I'm addicted to heroin and I have a big problem with it. At least then, they're not saying they're going to do anything about it. This person is literally telling you all their problems and then telling you why it occurred and then still says, but it's not my fault, it's everybody else's fault. Like, that's terrible. That's actually terrible, dude. It really changes the way that you interact with the injustices of the world. With I, Man, I feel bad for her husband, dude. I really do, man. Because it's like, this woman is just not even taking responsibility in any way. She can't see herself doing anything wrong, even though she literally admitted all the wrong. The way that the world is fat phobic, it really changes how much responsibility you take for the world not having caught up with the reality of the situation. And you can be so much kinder to yourself. You can I, fine, sure. If this is how you cope, if this is how you want to like live your life, dude, and just understand that none of, none of this is your fault. I mean, you're literally not even taking responsibility at all. And she's self admitting that. I'll, I'll, I fuck with it, dude. Whatever, man. If that's what you want to do, that's okay. But it's obviously not going to be benefiting you since you're literally only going to get worse and worse and worse because you're blaming it on somebody that's not going to be able to do anything about it. So, and the only person that can do anything about it is you. So you're just going to progressively have a life that's progressively ass. So can stop punishing yourself so much and you can yes still be really angry about the injustice and the fact that we really should I mean, have caught up further by you basically just took all responsibility away from yourself and then just like laid down <laughs> you just like oh i feel so much better knowing that i don't have to do anything let me just go ahead and order this like seventh order of uber eats today i have the guy on retainer he's actually just outside my house right now he's just waiting for the order because at the consistency at which i order these orders is actually way more capacity than he would get if he was just driving around and just waiting for orders to occur. So, yeah, I mean, no, like, it's great. It's awesome that you no longer take accountability. Like, I can't even believe you made this video and you thought this was cool. It's not cool. It's actually kind of crazy that you would even say this stuff. But, I mean, keep living your copy life, I guess. Now, as a, like, culture, but at least you are annoyed about an injustice huh. rather than a personal failure. I, that is, it is, I'm sorry, bro. This is so crazy. She's like literally self-admitting that it's her fault. She articulated it fully, but somehow she still forgives herself, even though it's all her. She, she forgave herself through the realm of everybody else's injustice when she can't even identify why it's everybody else's injustice. She's just blank, just pointing at a map and going that bad. Jesus. Being fat is not a personal failing. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, listen, dude, okay? Can we just be honest here for a second? When you watch My 600 Pound Life, right? I know this is an extreme example. Uh, are you going to tell me that those people that are eating four, five, six, seven, eight thousand calories a day is not a personal failing? And even if you want to go to like the very, very broad spectrum here, very generalization, most people that are fat are fat because they're eating too many calories. I know people, you know people, it's happening all the time where people are just eating too much. And sometimes that might actually not be volume of food, but the density of the food. Sometimes somebody can eat a donut and that donut it's not a lot of food if it's like that big for a donut i don't know why they shrink them nowadays but anyway a donut that big it's like 300 400 calories you just ate that that's like half a meal or more half a meal or more and you do that three or four times you ate too much today 
You ate way too much today off of donuts. People do it all the time. I, you know, I, I'm guilty of it. Where I eat too much sometimes, it happens, right? The point I'm making is, why the why would we ever, 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 ever? Would you get met? Okay, would you say the same thing if it was somebody that was like smoking cigarettes? Like if somebody was sitting there and going to the 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 the, the corner store, right? The Chinese corner store to go pick up their pack of cigarettes every single day. They picked up two, three, four, five packs of cigarettes, smoking cigarettes consistently. Would you say it's not their fault for smoking cigarettes or their lungs being bad or they have lung cancer? Would you say that's not their problem? Because it's like that's like a direct correlation there. That's a direct correlation. Or would you just blame it on society for what? Like, I don't even know what you would even blame there. Like, how would you even go about doing that? Like, we, I guess you would sit there and say, like, it's the government's fault for enabling people to buy the cigarettes instead of, like, actually focusing on the person that's buying the cigarettes. It's like blaming porn stars for men beating off to their vaginas. Like, they, what are you, they're just supplying a demand that's obviously there. And for the vast majority of us, we are not choosing to be fat. We have spent our lives trying not to be fat, trying to hate ourselves into not being fat dieting engaging in really like dangerous behaviors really unhealthy behaviors in this oftentimes i see these people to try to they try to justify not losing weight through these like weird oh when i did try to lose weight i went really extreme like i always hear this bro it's one of two things usually it's usually i went to the gym i worked out and i didn't see any weight loss and so i just stopped because it wasn't going to work for me so therefore i just didn't do it and which is always bullshit because everybody knows that when you're going to the gym that's not the pinnacle to the weight loss if you're going to the gym and you're burning 300 400 calories but then you go home and you eat 8,000. guess what you're going to gain weight and you're going to be dissuaded because you thought that going to the gym was like the be all end all when it comes to weight loss when in reality it's not so instead uh and i hear this all the time too as well uh oh when I was doing my weight loss, I went on a literal 100 calorie deficit. I went on 100, I went on a 1,000 calorie deficit, even though I was eating 5,000 calories a day, and it wasn't sustainable for me. I literally physically cannot do it. I was like having rebounds. I was like binging and stuff like that. Like, I get it, yeah. But those are two very extreme methods and should not be looked at as the default methods. You're doing something very extreme in order to obtain the weight loss. So I wouldn't look at that as the number one way. Like if you did that and you didn't get any progress, I know. That's like somebody that literally cannot swim, jumping into the deep end of this pool and then drowning. Yes, it makes sense, dude, obviously. So if you're sitting here and you're using these scenarios as a justification for not trying to lose weight because it's just not possible for you, you're dumb this desperate attempt to just be okay to just fit into the world to just adhere to listen how how it would be harder for the world to fit into you than it, it would be for you to fit into the world given that you're one person and the world is a lot more than that these like weird standards um because we believe that we did something wrong and that's why we ended up here and i also wanted to know like you you have no issue fitting into the world when it comes to many other things, right? When it comes to operating in society, getting a job, when it comes to making money, when it comes to skincare, when it comes to hair care, when it comes to like all these like traditional things that we would determine to be structures that society has put in place. But when it comes to things like this, you just find no value in it. You literally look at these things as like, no, we should not apply to these things. Why do we say this is okay, but this is not okay? I would love to know the logic behind that. And then I also love that, like, like you didn't say anything. Like, literally, you went on for, I think that was a four-minute video, and you literally said almost nothing. Actually, less than nothing. You you actually self-admitted that you were coping, and that you were using... Go ahead. This is for my fat friends. Just us? Okay. <laughs> I'm not fat, and I don't think we're friends with this woman, but maybe I'm friends. I don't know. Maybe we could be friends. I hit her up on Instagram. Maybe we can have, like, a DM exchange and talk about stuff. Just a really quick reminder that you do not need to justify or explain why you are fat. Yeah, we all know. It's okay. We all know why you're fat. We don't need to justify it. Like, nobody, like if you're sitting there and then somebody goes, hey, man, why are you fat? That's just them being an asshole. Don't try to justify it and go like, well, I'm just big boned or I have PCOS or whatever. No, we know. We know. We know. We know why. It doesn't why. need to be a reason. It doesn't matter if there's a health issue like behind it, if you took some medication that made you put on weight, if you had a horrible childhood all those things are valid, but also it could just be that you really like cake. Whatever it is, it doesn't mean that you are more or less deserving of respect. I'm just sick of people saying things very, very kindly or putting on this facade of, I'm gonna say this very, very sweetly and saying the most vile, most disgusting shit you've ever heard in your entire life. I'm just sick of people saying that because they'll call you out for yelling or screaming or whatever when 
what am I what am I what am I yelling and screaming about? I'm just really passionate about the fact that you're wrong so tremendously and you think that you have the high ground or the moral significance because you're talking to me in a stable tone of voice. You're saying disgusting stuff. So, nah. Uh I'm going to scream all day, dude. You 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 actually vile. Treatment like a human, you do not need to explain why you exist or why you are the way you are to anyone in order to gain their respect. Or sure, but if you're going to a job and you're going like, hey, man, I'm like applying for that position where I have to stand up for eight hours a day. And that guy goes, can you? And you go, well, I don't need to explain whether or not I can or cannot. Like, it should just be sufficient. Just because I'm fat doesn't mean that I should have to explain. Well, then you're not hired. That's you're going to need to justify shit. OK, like there are going to be times and scenarios in your life where you are in places where things go wrong or things occur where you're going to need to explain this stuff. And you can't explain it because this person just tells you you shouldn't have to which is bullshit. Like, what if you go to the doctor and the doctor's like, well, like, what's going on with you? Like, you're literally dying right now and you're overweight like crazy. Why is this occurring? And you go, well, I don't need to explain it. That doctor's gonna go, oh, okay, bye. Like, what are you even doing here then? Like, why would you come to my office if you were not gonna be here for help? Like, what is the purpose? Like, you need to get, help me to help you. Like, give me some context here, dude. Or to be less marginalized by them. So, very quick reminder. These people literally have oppression on the brain too much, dude. I'm sorry, bro. I don't know why we have oppression Olympics nowadays. I don't know. I remember like a point in time where it was good to be accomplished or have a, you know, get up and go attitude. But it seems like nowadays we're like celebrating people that are like, I'm lazy. I'm fat. I don't want to do anything about it. I literally put all my responsibilities on everybody else. Yeah, I have kids. Yeah, I have family. And I have people that like rely on me. But, you know, to be honest, fuck them. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, it is what it is. I'm just going to stay home and eat like Chipotle all day. Hey, fat people. Fat people, come here, come here, come here, come here. Have you ever thought about how much of an impact you could have on the whole world and just your life in general if you stopped hating the fact that you were fat? I don't think very many fat people hate the fact that they're fat. It's just something to acknowledge. And by the way, if you think that you don't like the fat on your body, there's probably a good reason for that. Like it's probably negatively affecting you in a lot of places and you're probably suffering the consequences of that. It's okay to acknowledge that. It's literally fine that's like somebody with no legs going like yes it is empowering to acknowledge even though that i have no legs that i can walk yes it is empowering what are you talking about dude like yeah sure like i'm sure it'd be better for your mental headspace to i guess just like it's like that meme you ever you ever see that meme where it's like that guy's in the the house is on fire and he's just sitting at the dinner table and it's like all on fire and he just takes a sip of the coffee and he's like this is okay that's you like it's fine you can totally cope with it you can totally just sit there and like pretend it's not there but it's there. Your shit is like being really fucked up, you know? It's better to acknowledge it and then have that information up front. So, I was getting into the shower today and- That's, okay. This just suddenly came into my head and you know, I talk to myself like I'm the best girl in the world nowadays. So I was like- Main character syndrome, by the way. Main character syndrome. Hannah, you were so amazing. And can you imagine how much you'd have got done if you hadn't been obsessed? What kind of, I'm sorry, dude. Do people have these thought patterns all the time, dude? I, mean, I Okay, sometimes I'll go, I'm really good at this game or I'm really good at building Lego sets. I'm really good at this. I'm not going, man, I'm so, oh my God. I'm like literally the most amazing, beautiful, spectacular person in the entire world. There's literally nobody else out there that is even equivalent to me. I'm just so incredibly amazing. Like, I don't know, personally speaking, dude, I'm not about that life. Maybe you are, maybe you have some context on this. It just seems a little cringe, but anyway. Hannah, you were so amazing. And can you imagine how much you'd have got done if you hadn't been obsessing about your weight for the last 20 years? It's like, oh, <laughs> imagine. If I didn't spend every morning. The fact that you think like this, it, it should be an indicator that this is a problem. Like, you're you're literally fantasizing about fantasizing about not thinking that your weight is a problem. And you don't think you have an issue with your weight. Waking up thinking today is going to be the day I diet. Every evening, having that last supper before the diet starts, calculating how many calories I have to eat to lose how much weight by what day, weighing myself like multiple times a day, tracking my steps, over-exercising, looking at photos of clothes I could wear when I'm thin. Yeah, so like I can already tell that you were doing this wrong. Like this is exactly what I say, like very extreme measures to try to lose weight. When the reality of the situation is slow and steady wins the race, dude, okay? Take your time. Feel it out, dude. Don't just sit there and jump in the deep end. What are you talking about? Like, you're Googling clothes that you're going to buy when you're a size zero? 
you're fucking looking at what your body type or what kind of body composition you're gonna look like when you're this size. Uh, you're you're mid maxing at the gym. You're literally going there for hours at a time. You're cutting extreme amounts of calories. Literally everything she's saying is literally what I said before, and I did not watch this video before. So like, yes, exactly what I'm saying. These people have like a major issue, bro. Like literally, one of the most. And they'll sit there and they'll try to say, like, no, I'm right about this. No, you're not. You're literally explaining all the things that you did wrong and you're acknowledging them as something you did wrong. But instead of determining, there, it's, there's techniques involved, okay? Like, there are good, there are, there's work harder and then there's work, work smarter. The way that you were doing it was, like, working so hard that it just, like, you rebounded like crazy. Eating myself because I put the weight back on, like, planning my meals. Yeah. Sitting on the sofa for an hour thinking I am gonna eat that Mars bar, but I'm not gonna eat that Mars bar. Fighting with myself about it. Can you- What are you talking about, dude? What? Jeez, man. You really having these struggles like that? Eat what you want, just eat less. Like that's- Imagine. The last 20 years of my life when I, that's all I was doing and I was just hating myself because I was fat and trying to plan to not be fat. Can you imagine if all that energy had gone into something else? What an amazing impact I'd have had on the world or how much money I'd have made for myself or how many extra skills I would have or how many more friendships I would have. Imagine how much mental energy. I think this woman is actually crazy. Like I think that she has some kind of like deliria or something like that, dude. This woman is betraying so many signs of like a psychopathic tendencies, dude. What are you talking about? Like Dude, you're you're coping hard right now, bro. You literally had an issue, and it seems like they, those issues are undissolved. You are putting undissolved. into hating yourself and hating being fat and planning to fix yourself, even though we know statistically it's not going to happen. Well, listen, just be, look, dude. You guys are on some different shit, dude. You love to bring up statistics when it only matters to you, but whenever it doesn't matter to you, you just always go with, "No, it's logical." What are you talking about? Like, what, I knew somebody anecdotally. I knew a guy that couldn't lose weight. Me too. I couldn't lose weight either. Shut the fuck up. Like, you, you don't give a fuck about statistics and stop bringing them up. Imagine if all that energy had gone into something that you loved, that you really cared about, that you were passionate about, that you were good at, that you were fired you, up. You can do all that stuff and then lose weight. I get it. Maybe like 20 years ago or wherever, wherever she was losing the weight, it was maybe more difficult to lose weight because like information nowadays is paramount. We have so much shit nowadays to prepare you to get you through the act and like understand nutrition it's very easy nowadays and i feel like it's probably been pretty easy nowadays to uh, compile a bunch of evidence or compile a bunch of like skills and understanding about nutrition especially in the last i would say 10 years like since the internet has become pretty big um so like 2014 ish it's been pretty good and every year has been better and better and better so i get it like i can forgive it to a certain degree but the way you're explaining it is literally like you were doing everything wrong and you just never just you just gave up and now you're sitting there going like I could have done so many stuff so much more stuff when I didn't do that you could still lose weight and do other things like I know that a lot of people sit there and go like oh yeah no I have to do one at a time it's okay to like be linear on stuff but um it's really important to not have tunnel vision and like okay I'm gonna lose weight but I'm also gonna work I'm also gonna do this I'm also gonna do that like it's okay to do all that stuff while you're doing that it's a passive thing most of the time when you lose weight anyway like you're just doing you're just eating less food or you're just going about it in a less calorie dense way up about can you imagine how different your life would be how different the life of the people around you would be i feel like people say really crazy stuff and sometimes i hear hear them say it and i go this is insane like this person is literally talking about some shit that's like psychopathic but nobody's gonna see it that way like this is actually crazy talk and this person i guess gets a pass like nobody cares i guess like this is actually crazy like how much further you'd be in your career or how much like more decorating you'd have done in your house. You're crying about spilled milk, dude. It is what it is. Like, you wasted your time. It is what it is. I mean, it's okay to look back at those times and be like, oh, yeah, I made some mistakes. I did some things that I probably shouldn't have done. We all have those things. And you know what? It's good that you have those abilities to look back, but it kind of seems like you have an inability to look at what's actually matterful, like things that are actually meaningful instead of like you're looking at it like as a big giant spectrum of I fucked up because I tried to lose weight, which is crazy, even though like you've literally said that it was your fault, but I guess we're just taking accountability away from ourselves all the time here. So, I mean, I get it. Like, it's good. You can take responsibility for yourself and you're looking back on that stuff and you're going to grow from that. But it almost kind of seems like you haven't grown grown like you're literally seeing all that stuff and you're going but it's not my fault how do you so like you're never gonna grow then like i have never seen i've never seen this before actually i've never seen somebody acknowledge the things that they did wrong and then instead of going oh yeah i did these things wrong i'm never gonna do that again like i've learned from my mistakes instead i'm hearing 
oh, well, I'm just, like, going to forgive all that stuff and then, like, it's not my fault. Like, what? what is even the purpose of looking back then? Like, you, like what is... Wh how many more dogs you'd have rescued or how many more instruments you would play or languages you would speak or how much like positive I get it I get it I get it you could have done a lot of stuff if you didn't do what you did I get it impact you'd have had on your community or just like how much money you'd have made or like yeah, you said that already whatever it is can you imagine if for the last however long you've been dieting and hating yourself and for me it is like 20 years can you imagine if you had used all that energy the like 80 percent of your brain space that was on that and the rest of it was just surviving until you lose weight can you imagine if all of that was put into something else i just want it, it's not as difficult as i feel like these people make it out to be dude like i've known people that were very very overweight and they went on a slight calorie deficit sure it's gonna take a little bit of time like a year maybe two years depending on how much you weigh but in that meantime of you losing that weight, you're getting better looking, you're feeling better, you're more aerobic, you have more opportunities because now you're less likely to fuck up in job positions and things such and so forth. Like you can do more physically, which is really required for a lot of jobs. So these people always go off on this like it's impossible type thing, but it's not. It's really not impossible. And you telling people this is really terrible and disgusting. This to be your wake up call that you could stop right now you guys act as though being fat is not life-threatening. Like, you may not be suffering the consequences right now, but even then, you are. But they will catch up to you. Like, you do realize that this shit is, like, gonna expedite your lifespan. Like, you potentially are taking 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 years off your life. And that might be okay with you now because you're not gonna see it until it happens. But I guess it doesn't matter for you guys, right? Like, you don't care when you die or suffer major health complications because of that? Like... I guess, like, if that's what you fucking want, but you're literally, like, gaslighting into people believing that this is not a problem. It is a problem. You could stop putting that energy into hating yourself, sure. into planning to lose weight, into hating being fat, and you could go and do something that you really love and really care about, because... But what if you're fat and you can't do that? Like, what if what if you're fat and you, like, you physically can't do those things anymore? I guess you can't do that or just give up on it or try, try really, really hard, even though it's, like, impossible? And you could go and do something that you really love and really care about because we only get one life. That's a crazy and statement. I for one know that I don't want to waste any more time obsessing over my weight when I could be living. Love you. Bye. Dude, um, tch, yep, YOLO, dude. You only live once, so hashtag make the most of it, but that does not include taking care of yourself, apparently. I guess. Regardless, uh, we're going to end the video here, guys. Uh, I appreciate everybody that watched the video today. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're beautiful. You're amazing. You're fantastic. You're an amazing person. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate everybody leaving a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. I want to thank everybody that's a member, everybody that's subscribed already. Thank you guys so much. You guys are all beautiful and appreciative. If you watched the video in its entirety, leave it down below by typing in screwdriver. Because these are beautiful, aren't they? Beautiful, beautiful screwdriver. They gave me the screwdriver to put the... I put a new, like... I, it's like a shrine. It's like a shelf. Like two shelves that I put the, the serps on. I have another one, but I haven't put it together yet. But I'm going to work on that. And I'm going to put that together. It didn't take that much long. Um, it did come from China. So it, it took like literally four weeks to get here in the mail. And uh, oh, well, you know, it's cool now, though. It's coming here. It's here. And I'm going to build it. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fantastic. Kind of like you. Like the way you built yourself. The way that you've contoured yourself. The way that you've worked on yourself. Don't believe this woman. You can improve. It is possible to lose weight. And if you want to do it, I think you should. I think you would look great. I think you would smell great. I think you would be great. I think you're an amazing person regardless, but I think you could be a better person. That's always great. And to top it off, you are doing it for yourself, but you're also doing it for other people around you, and that's beautiful. Thank you so much for watching the video today. Uh, if you want to check out my social medias, it'll be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 